Hello, this is H.C. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Chrono Cross! If you're watching this episode in the future, then I assume you're looking to find out how things turn out when Guile guides us to Viper Manor. If you're in the wrong spot, well then, hopefully I'll have some annotation links to guide you to uh, Pierre's or Nikki's path. Or if you just want to find out how we get up to this point after recruiting Kit, you know, you can watch the original playlist that I branch off to this playlist. So let's talk to Gal. He's interested in uh, stealing an item from uh, Viper Manor there. I don't think they ever say what the item is that you want him to steal. I mean, I know what it is, and I know how to confirm that that was the item. But they never tell you, steal this item for Guy out there. Oh, we need a boat to get there. Well, how's that gonna work out? They got cliffs along the backside there. Well, maybe he knows a magic trick or something, so... Yay! He enigmatically joined my party there. Alright. Let's confirm him and get our Radical Dreamers team together. Yeah, in the uh, Radical Dreamers game, these were the three characters in the game. Uh, Serge, Kid, and Guy out there. So let's find a boat. Oh, okay. I didn't know they mentioned uh, where the item is. Okay, well there you go. It's in the manor's mess hall. We'll have to look for it there. But anyway, Guile is amazing. Not only just a cool reference to Magus, but he has excellent magic power. He flies across the screen when you're running, just like Magus, so he doesn't have to walk, I guess. But uh, he's also very good in a lot of other ways. I'll be showing that off uh, well, when we get into some battles there. By the way, uh, if I didn't tell you before, uh, you want to make sure you make, uh, uh, with Pierre's path, make a save file outside of Termina with Pierre, in addition to a save file that you have before branching off to these other paths. It'll be important for, uh, well, later in the game if you want to recruit them in a new game plus. Let's see here. There he is. Got a little stuck there for a moment. I've never seen that balancing thing on that boat there, viewers. I thought the writers of this game were just pulling something out of their ass. But, uh, okay, well, enough of you conv- or er, what is it? Enough of you told me about it that, well, I'll just assume that it's true. Even though I've never seen something like that, ever. We've got Guile here. He can tell us how to get there. Just prepare the boat and take us to the uh, Cliffs of Insanity, I guess. Yeah, we gotta pay him 100 gold, so... Yay! Sounds like a plan. Let's go. This kind of sounds like a cool way to get to the manor. Of course, we could just walk right through the front gate, but uh, we don't have Pierre with us, apparently, so... Because we have Gaia, we have to uh, be more stealthy about it, I guess. But yeah, the thing with uh, Gaia is that uh, in Radical Dreamers, uh, the game, his name was actually Majel. And then uh, he was Magus in disguise. And uh, I think his name for short was just Gil. So then when they made Chrono Cross, they said, well, let's make his name Guile and drop the whole Magus backstory, make him more of a reference to Magus. So, no, Guile is not Magus, period. I know there's that bonus ending in Chrono Trigger DS where Magus loses his memory, and theoretically that could explain, well, yeah, that's why he became Guile. Well, they never said he became Guile. He just lost his memory. That doesn't mean that he's Guile. He's not. So, uh, until they, you know, say something in an Ultimania or something like that, Magus is not Guile, period. End of story. All right, we made it. Got some nice adventurous music here. Well, we're climbing a cliff. Of course it's dangerous. Fortunately, they have some stone ladders for us to climb here. Well, he knew how to get here, so... I hate it when people use the word arse. Just go all the way and swear. Ass! 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 Okay, we're all set and ready to go. Uh, if you want to, you actually don't need to have Guile in your party anymore. You can leave and go back to a save point and switch Guile out. And you never need to use him to guide you through Viper Manor, but I want to. There's a treasure chest over there, but we can't quite reach it yet unless we go through this hidden passage. Just 
climb over here. If you want to know my element setup, I posted it in the video description there, so you can see that. That is one of the drawbacks to Gal. He has a lot of magic power, but he uh, doesn't have a whole lot of element slots. Not that I think that that's really a big deal, but uh, oh, this guy throwing rocks at me is a big deal. It's like Death Mountain all over again. Nuts. Well, anyway, um, I'm not going to show you my uh, element setup, but uh, let's just take a quick look at the uh, equipment setup here. Uh, basically, iron equipment on the weapons there. Helmets all around. Make sure to give the silver loop to Guile, because his hit percentage is a little low. And in case you didn't watch the uh, Pierre uh, path that I did, if you press left from the equip screen, you can go to your other party members, like Poshul, who might have had some equipment left over without actually switching him back into your party there. You can do the same thing with elements. Get their elements off of them, uh, so that way you don't have to worry about that. And by the way, hold on to your old weapons, too, because you might need to switch them off, so that way you can, like, disassemble them to use the iron for something else. So anyway, we got some new enemies here. Bats. Uh, gobbledygook. Now, one of the very, very, very nice things about Guile that almost no one I've seen talks about is his fierce attack. Because he uses a rod as a weapon, his fierce attack hits all enemies at once. It's amazing. Rods and boomerangs are the only weapons in the game that do that. And I don't know why no one really talks about that. I mean, I think that's just the best thing in the world. And it's really good late game, too. But uh, for right now, um, I mean, it's still very good right now. If only there were a way that I could use his fierce attacks all the time. Well, not right now. Yeah, got him. Now, another nice thing about gobbledygooks is that they have a rare chance of dropping antitoxinal caps, um, which protect you from the poison status. I wouldn't, like, specifically go after that, but if you just happen to win one, hey, keep it in mind, you know, because, uh, I mean, it's... It's more for convenience sake than for actual real usefulness, but, I mean, it's still pretty good. Wait for this thing? Yeah, you see that thing will knock you down. We don't want to do that yet. There we go. Get past it. Yes. Sometimes I, uh, you know, screw up that, but, uh, well, not today. Not today. Got another new enemy here. Uh, Poshul would actually be pretty good against these guys, but, uh, I wanted to go with the, uh, Radical Dreamers party, so... Usually I like having Guile going first. And his uh, level 3 tech, Wanda In, as you saw from the uh, previous uh, battle there, it's amazing. Lots of damage there. Ha! Now, the other thing about using uh, multi-targeting weapons for their um, fierce attack is it has to hit all enemies in order for you to build up your element power. If you miss one of them, you don't get credit for hitting the other enemies to uh, get the element power, so that is a little bit of a drawback, but uh, nothing I ever really worry about. I think these guys can poison you. I forget. But in any case, you know, if you win an antitoxinal cap, equip them. Why not? You got nothing better to do. Getting a few stat boosts. Awesome. Gal could, well, everyone could use more HP. Some people have been saying they have a lot more HP than I do. And don't get hit by the racks. They will, uh, well, they'll hurt you. Well, we got a heal element, so, uh, yeah, we can't get to the right there, so, uh, let's just backtrack then. Come on. Yes. Get hit by the water there, and you get knocked all the way down to the beginning, where we can get this treasure. All right. Get another photon ray element. White elements are a little rare right now, so we might as well, uh, well, pick up as many of them as we can. I think that's, uh, all of the new enemies. Oh, if I didn't mention it earlier, you can talk to uh, Korcha and you can go back to Termina if you want to, for some godforsaken reason. Uh, I don't know why, but... Guile's amazing! Why wouldn't you want to bring him along? Whee! Yeah, we gotta do that a couple times to uh, get all the treasure here. Whoa! Come on, get down. There we go. I like how in Link's Awakening they made a reference to uh, Death Mountain with, uh, what is it, the Tao Tao Mountains and the rocks hitting you like that. No! Yes, made it. Oh, I love Guile and his ability to hit all enemies with rods. Ha <laughs> uh, It's just so good. Unfortunately, there's just not that many characters who can uh, use those kind of weapons. And we get another meteorite. That's one of the advantages of going through Guile's path, because uh, in the other paths, it's kind of hard to find white attacking elements. 
Oh, well, that's one way of getting down faster. Yeah, Guile's the only character, only black elemental character in the game who gets a multi-targeting weapon. So can we make it all the way to the top of the Viper Manor Bluffs? Find out next time on Let's Play Chrono Cross! This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day. Now that's a cliffhanger.